Hi, and in today's video I'm going to show you how to create this Christmas poster in Word. Now what I'm going to do is keep referring back to this particular poster just so it gives you a guide as to what it is I'm trying to achieve. So the first thing we're going to do is to put in this red background. So here's my plain default document. I'm just going to insert, shapes, click on the drop down and select this first square. Click and drag out rectangle. Now, for those of you who don't have a borderless printer, if you're going to print this out, if you don't have a borderless printer, then your poster will print out like this with that white border around the outside. If you do that, when we put the graphics inside, make sure that you don't put the this square right up to the edges as I'm about to do like this, because when you put the graphics in the middle, you'll be aligning them to the very edges of the page. And actually you might want to make them a little bit smaller because then when it prints out like this with the white border around the edge, then you might want to have made those graphics that little bit smaller. But just for the purpose of this demonstration, I'm gonna take these right to the edge. Now to customize the colors of this rectangle, I'm going to select it, go to shape format and go over to format pane. In here on the bucket icon here, you've got fill and line. Line is the border line around the outside of this rectangle. You can't quite see it, but there is one there, so we're just gonna take that out and say no line. And then the fill is the internal color, which is currently set to blue. Now we're going to use a gradient because if you can just see here, it's slightly darker on the outside of this edge, and then it gets lighter and brighter in the center. So let's go to gradient fill. And because I've already rehearsed this, you can see my colors are already in this gradient, but I'll go through it and show you how to do it. So the first thing is you need a radial gradient, and that means you'll have that circular brightness in the center and the darker edges. Go to direction, and then let's just move this over. If we just go to direction, choose this center one here where the lighter color is in the center. And then we go down to our gradients. Now here you've got two stops and you can move these sliders in that. And as, you, as I move it, you can see what happens to my gradient. So I've just moved it to about here. Now to select the colors, just select one of the markers here, go to your color and click on the drop down. And I've just used a standard dark red here, which is on this side, and then over here, Again, click on it, you know you've selected it, it's got a little orange outline. Go to color and I've selected the bright red in standard colors. So that's really simple and straightforward. And again, move the sliders to where you want that gradient. So now we've selected our background color, we're going to go back to the original and we're going to grab these two bows here. So I'm gonna quickly dive onto the internet and I'm going to go to my favorite website, which is pixabay.com, where you can select lots and lots of free images. So just type into here, gold ribbon, press enter, and then you can go down here and select from any of these options. You don't have to choose the one that I've selected. But I've selected this one here. I've just selected free download, and then you may have to sign up just given your email address and then you can have that free download onto your computer. So once you've downloaded it, go to insert pictures, click on the drop down and go to picture from file. Go to your downloads and here you can see my file ribbon, click on it and then just click insert. Now often when your images are inserted, you can't see them, you can just see this white outline here. But don't worry, it is there. So if I move this background, you can see it's appeared here. But it's actually just behind this background. And that's what often happens when you insert an image. They hide themselves behind things. So all you need to do is click on the ribbon, go to picture format, go to wrap text, click on the drop down, and select in front of text. And then that ribbon will move in front of your text. So let's put the background back. And then we can just move this ribbon up and then we can just rotate it and then just make it as big or small as you want. 
Now I'm going to duplicate this and the way I choose to do this is to hold down my Alt key while I've selected it, you see my cursor changes, click and drag out another bow. Then deselect it, reselect it and then you can rotate this one using this circular arrow key at the top and then move that to the top there. Now this is all personal preference, you can make them as big or small as you like. If you want to make them identical, you can either wait until you're happy with one and then choose to copy and paste it, then they'll be exactly the same size. Or you can go up to the measurement, so select it, go to picture format, go along to the measurements and just make sure those dimensions are equal and then they'll both be exactly the same size. So once I've selected them, I'm going to roughly try and get them the same distance from the edges here and here and again here and here. The one thing I can do to align them is to select them both, hold down your command or control key and select both of them by clicking on them. Go to picture format, go to align, click on the drop down and select align to top and that means they're perfectly aligned there. Now to make sure they're in the middle, if you group them, go to group and select group. They're now one group. Now we can go to align and select align to center. And now they're perfectly lined up and they'll be also lined up at the top here. So the next item we'll do is just the text boxes and we're going to create an awful lot of text boxes for the text. And then we'll come back and in, in fact, let's go and insert this banner here, this red banner. So again, let's go back to the internet, back to Pixabay. I'm just going to press back here, go to the top. And then I'm just going to select gift ribbon, press enter. And then if I just scroll down, I will find the banner. Here we go. You can see there's a selection here, but I've used this top one. I'll show you how to crop all these others out. So select this one and then go to your free download. Just click on it. Again, go to insert picture, picture from file. And then I've got gift ribbon here and then click insert. Again, it's gone behind, so you don't need to do anything now. Just go straight up to wrap text, click on the drop down and select in front of text. Keep it selected, stay on picture format and go to the crop tool and click. You can now see you've got all of these black markers around the outside. Just click on the bottom one and drag it all the way up until you've cropped everything out except for this top banner. Try and get it between the two, in the gap basically between the two top ones and just release it, go back it to crop and just click. And there you've cropped everything else out and you've just got this banner here. So you're just going to make this banner a little bit bigger. There we go. And to ensure it's in the center again, align, align to center. Now I'm not going to do that for everything at the moment because you keep nudging stuff all the way through it and you keep clicking on different things. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put everything in and then at the end I'm going to go back and align everything to the middle because otherwise you just keep going backwards and forwards doing the same thing. So the next thing is the text. So go to insert, text box, click on the drop down and select draw text box and click and drag out a text box. So here I'm just going to put some text in and then I'm just going to customize this text, select it, go to the home tab and I'm going to select this font here and I'm going to make that a little bit bigger. So I'm going to select this increase font size tool here to about there. And then as you can see, I've got a black border and a white background to this text box, which I don't want. So select it. Go to shape format, go to this shape outline here, click on the drop down, no outline, shape fill, click on the drop down, no fill. Then I'm going to change the color of the text. So go to the home tab, font color and click white. Then I'm going to center it using the align to center or center text. There we go. Now, because we have so much text on this page and we're going to use text boxes, Instead of going through taking the border out, taking the background out for every single one, all we're going to do is make lots of copies. So select this text box, hold down your Alt or Option key, click and drag. Now I'm going to keep doing this quite a few times because we've got quite a lot of information. 
that will save you an awful lot of time because you just grab one, customize it. So for this one at the top, as you can see on this one, we've got this one at the top and then we've got the best. So we're going to do that one next. So click on this text box, double click inside so your cursor's there. If you press Command or Control A, it will select everything. So you can then just go in and type. And then I can either select the text to customize it or click away from the box, click back on. And if my cursor is not inside, I can then just go up and customize the text. So I'm going to use bold and increase font size. And I think it was probably 40. So I'm going to select the figures there and just put 40 and press enter. And now I want to put a little bit of a shadow on this text. So I'm going to go back over to my shape format menu over here. I'm going to select text options and I'm going to select this center icon here, text effects. Go to shadow, click on the drop down. And then here I'm going to use the presets. Let me just bring this in. Presets and I'm going to select this one here. Now you can customize this shadow. You can see I've got a little shadow here. You can use all of these tools to customize that shadow, but I'm not going to go through them because you literally are, they are self-explanatory. Just use the sliders backwards and forwards to see what you would prefer. So the next one is we're going to put Christmas in. I'm just going to move that up a little bit. We're going to put the word Christmas in. So again, double click inside, Command or Control A. I'm going to try type Christmas. Again, deselect, reselect, and now go back up to the Home tab. Click on the drop down. Now I'm going to select this font, Bellania, however you want to pronounce it. Now this is a font I got from a website called defonts.com. I've just done a video on how to insert fonts into your Word software. So if you want this particular font, then just follow that video. It's very quick and simple. It's like a two minute video, super simple. And then just import this font into your software. So I'm just going to click on that. And I've used all capitals for this, so I'm going to select it, go to the Home tab, go to this drop down here and select Sentence Case. And I'm going to increase that quite a lot because I want that to be quite a big word for my poster. It's a little bit too big, so let's just drop that down slightly. Let's just move that down. Select the banner, let's just move that banner down a little bit. There we go. Now on the poster, you can see we've got a nice gradient being used through this word and also we've got a shadow. So let's select it, go back over to shape options and text options. Let's go to text options here. So we've got solid fill at the moment, which is white. Now we want a gradient fill. And as you can see, my gradient is as my last gradient was for the background. So all we need to do now is to change the color. We are still on radial. So I'm going to select the first color, click on the drop down. Let's just bring this in. Click on the drop down and let's select a gold color. That's for the internal. So I'll show you how to swap those around. So let's choose that bright yellow. I think it's one of these actually bright yellow and then for the outer gold we chose a darker gold here maybe this one was a little bit brighter there we go now if you can't find the color that you want let's tr try this color here that's better that's more of a gold now if you wanted to match the color with this bow here click on color go to more colors and you've got your color wheel so you can move the color wheel around or you can use this little eyedropper tool and then move this circle anywhere you like over this bow and just select a color of your choice. So let's move it over to this bit here. Your color will appear here, click OK. And then that color there will be matched to the bow. And then you've just got this lovely internal color as well. Again, you can move the slider to make that just slightly different. So if I move it to about here, and then let's go to this center icon here to put in the shadow. Click on the drop down and select the shadow. Perfect. The next thing we're going to do is to put in this party text here. Now notice that I have used 
the same text throughout. All we're doing is changing the size, the bold, and also the shadow as well. So let's just put part in here. Again, let's increase this one. Click off, click back on it. Let's increase that. Let's put that into bold. There we go. Again, go over to text options, the middle one, and let's put that shadow in again. There we go. Let's just increase that just one more. See how that looks. Okay, I'm going to take that down to, let's try 65. Maybe take that down to 60. Press enter. Now you can use your arrow keys to move these around. Let's just uh, click on there. You can move your arrow key, use your arrow keys to move this around, but you can see sometimes it doesn't quite sit in the middle. Now, to make smaller increments with your arrow keys, you can hit your command or control key and the other control key, hold them down at the same time, and then use your arrow keys, and you'll see there are just slightly small increments to that movement. There we go. If you want it perfectly centered, select the text box, hold down your command or control key, and select the ribbon behind. Then go to picture format, align, align to center. And you'll see that these boxes now are perfectly lined up to the center. Once you're happy with its placement, go to group and select group, because then it will move around as one entity, which means you haven't got the hassle of accidentally moving this and, and having to realign it. So just leave that there for a minute and then we'll come back and line the whole lot up at the end. There we go. And then here, We've got the date. Again, select all. And then I'm going to go uh, select it all again, go to the Home tab, increase the size of that. Let's put that in bold. Now for this one, I'm going to center it because I'm just going to put some lines in as well. So go to Shape Format, Align, Align to Center. Now, as you can see on the original, we've got these two lines in here. So go to Insert, Shapes, and then you go to Line, and then click, but hold down your Shift key to ensure you get a perfectly horizontal line. Let's extend that a little bit more. And now we need to change the color and width of this line, so make sure it's selected. It can be really hard to select these lines in Word because sometimes they just don't select you just have to keep clicking. It's a bit frustrating, but bear with it. Select it, go back over to the menu here, and go back to Line. And here I'm going to select Color, select White. And the width here, just use this arrow key, just keep clicking up. You can see my line is getting thicker. And just click until you're happy with the width of that line. So that's about right there. So then I'm going to go to Align, Align to Center. And then whilst it's selected, I'm going to use a different technique because this line is sometimes so hard to select. I'm not going to use the Alt or Option key. I'm going to press Command or Control C, Command or Control V, and then select a, another line. And then whilst that's selected, just use my arrow key to move it up, and then go back up to a line, a line to center. Now they are all now perfectly lined up to the center, and I'm happy with the gaps between the lines and the text. So without doing a great deal more, because these lines are so frustrating, hold down your command or control key and just make sure that line's selected, then click on the date, then click on the line below. Brilliant, I've man managed to do that first time. Then go up to group and select group. And now that's one entity again, and we haven't got to worry about that or nudging it or trying to align the lines. Next one, we've got the word features, command or control A, so again, select all, Command or Control A, go to the Home tab, you can increase the size of it, put it into bold, again, fully customize it however you like. And then here, we're going to put in all the information for the DJ. Now I'm gonna cheat a little bit here, I'm gonna copy and paste it, because it's quite a lot of text. So I'm gonna click inside, Command or Control A to select it all, Command or Control C to copy it, and then into here, select all the text, command control V, and there we have that information. It just saves you watching me type it all out. 
There we go. Now we haven't got enough of these text boxes, so I'm just going to copy and paste a few more out. I think we need about four more. There we go. I think that's all that we need. So leave that text there. Again, we've got lots of text to go in here. So again, I'm going to copy and paste this. Click inside, Command or Control A, copy, Command or Control C, sorry, Command or Control A to select all, Command or Control C to copy, and then double click in here, select it all, Command or Control V, there we go. Now this text here is 18 and this text here is font size 22. So they are slightly different sizes and the reason we do that is often it just creates a little bit more interest and it just looks better. And then we're going to put the text in here. So I'm going to speed the video up because all I'm doing is copy and pasting this text. You've got the text boxes and once I've copy and pasted it all I'll come back and show you how to align it all. Okay, so now we've got all of our text in. I'm going to center this text here, select it, shape format, align, align to center. Once it's in the center, it's a good idea. If you want to move it up or down, it's just to use your arrow keys because you just centered it. This box here and this box here, I'm going to align together. So let's pop this down. So the key is to put this, these two as close or as far away as possible or as, as you like. So I'll put mine about that distance apart. So I'm going to select them both holding down my command or control key. Go to shape format, align, and then I'm going to align them to the top so they're perfectly aligned. I'm going to go to group and select group. So now these two are one group and then align, align to center and then just use my arrow key to move them down. So now that's perfectly lined up with that. Hold down my command or control key and then select this one at the bottom with the address. Go to group and select group. And now all of those are one entity. And again, align to center. When you group them together, it just means that if you do notice them, you haven't got all of it to realign. And then I think so in this poster here, we've got these three snowflakes and the stars as well. And then we've got two dots here. So let's go ahead and select those stars. So what we need to do is go to insert icons. And then in the search bar here, up at icons, just put in snowflake. And then we'll select this one here, click insert. And again, you've got a box but you've got no snowflake. Now occasionally when you insert something into Word, you'll find that you've suddenly got two pages and half the text is over on this page and the, just the background's left and you just panic. Don't panic, whatever you do, just keep it selected. Don't do anything except to go to wrap text, click in front of text and it will all sort itself out. So let's keep that selected. You're on graphics format, go to graphics fill, Click on the drop down and select the color that you want. I'm going to select white and then I'm going to make it about that size there. Again, you can Command or Control C, Command or Control V, press Command or Control V again, and then you can produce three of those snowflakes. Again, select them all, Command, holding down your Command or Control key. Go to Graphics Format, go to Align. Now, what we're going to do here is going to use distribute horizontally and that will mean there is an equal gap between all of those snowflakes then align align to top so now they're all perfectly lined up to the top go to group select group they're all now one group go to align align to center perfect now we need the two dots but before we do that we're going to center this one shape format align align to center same with this one, and then same with this one. And then, actually, I'm going to reduce the size of that box. We've got to get these little circles either side. Go to Insert, Shapes, Circles. Click and drag out a circle whilst holding down your Shift key. If you don't, it will become an oval. 
Once it's selected, go to Shape Format, Shape Outline and get rid of the outline that's around that circle. Shape Fill and we'll select White. And then we're going to duplicate it. I'm going to use Command or Control C again because sometimes clicking and dragging out these circles are a pain. So watch this. This may not work. I'm just going to move. Oh, it does work. It moves. If I was to reduce the size of this, let's go back. If I was to reduce the size of this, you've got to hold down your shift key to maintain that circle. Often when you move it, that's what happens and it's really irritating. So Command or Control Z to go back and then move this one. Now I'm going to zoom in because it's a little bit easier. Reduce the size of this. Oh, I didn't hold my down my shift key. There we go. Now moving these little balls as a pain. You can see how that jumps. So let's just move this one down to the same size. Again, I didn't hold down my shift key. There we go. I think that's the same size. Yeah, it's slightly bigger. Okay, let's just get rid of that. It's not working, so just get rid of that one. Command and Control C, Command and Control V. Move it. Right, I'm now going to move it with my arrows because I find these really difficult to move around with the mouse because they're so tiny and they just want to jump around everywhere. So select them both, Command, holding down that Command or Control key. Go to Align. Select align to top and then group them together and then align to the center. And that should all perfectly line up. Once you're happy, let's just quickly zoom out. Once you're happy, you can select them all, holding down that command or control key again, group, and then again, that's one element. Just align that to the center. And then finally, we'll go through and align all of these as well. So align to center, align to center. Now if you want this S to come in front of this banner, select Christmas, go to shape format, go to bring forward, click on the drop down and say bring to front. And there you can see the text will overlap. So the last thing is to put the stars in at the edge here. So go to insert, icons, and then just type in stars. You can select any of these, but I'm going to select this top one up here. Click insert. Again, it's gone behind everything. Wrap text in front of text. Move them down to the bottom. Now, when you're duplicating anything, it's really important that you customize the first thing completely before then copying it, because otherwise you're just trying to duplicate everything you do from one to the other. So I'm going to change the color of this. So go to graphics fill and I'm going to select the dark red. And you can see you can't see that terribly well. So you can select a darker color using the color wheel or select it, go to format graphic, go to this icon here, which is the effects, then click on shadow, click on the presets, and we're going to go to this inner shadow here. And you can see, let's just zoom in, it creates an inner shadow. Now it's a bit too bold, so we're going to turn down that transparency. So move it to the right. And then scroll out or zoom out. And then just check how you want that to look on your page. Once you're happy, I'm just going to make that a little bit bigger. There we go. Once you're happy, hold down the Alt or Option key, click and drag. And for this demonstration, I actually reverse this one. And it's a quick and dirty thing to do. So you just have to literally grab this one and move it across the other way. And then move that down. Select them both, holding down the Command or Control key. Go to Graphics Format, Align align to top and then you can just make sure that the distance from the edge of your poster to the first star is the same. So deselect, I'm going to reselect this one and just move it with my arrow key. There we go. So there's your poster and now you can go ahead and just print that out if you want to or you can send it somebody as a PDF file or save it as a Word document. It's completely your choice. Now if you wanted to save this as an image 
and then send it somewhere. You can use it on a website or something like that. What you have to do, select the background and then holding down that command or control key, you need to select everything within your poster. Then go to graphic, you can go to any of these at the top, go to group, select group. Then the whole of this is one complete group and it's one complete image. Now, to make it a, to a JPEG, because look what happens. If I try to reduce the size of this, look what happens. Look at the text. It's all gone funny. So Command Control Z twice. So what you have to do is you have to save it as a JPEG. So right click, go to save as picture. I'm going to save it as picture one. I'm going to save it to my desktop. I'm going to save it as a JPEG and click save. Now let's just move this one down and then go to insert, picture, picture from file. You can see picture one here, click insert. Now whenever an image is inserted into Word, you can't move it. You can try but it clicks back. So again, the old thing we do, go back up to wrap text, make sure on picture format, wrap text, and then in front of text. Now you can move it anywhere. And now, as you can see, whenever we stretch that out, it's not affecting the text. Now you can see there is a white border around the edge. If you want to crop that, just go to the crop tool, and then use these black markers just to pull that in just get rid of these white borders. Oh, I don't know what that did. Command and Control Z to go back. There you go. And then just click, click Crop. And you can see you've now cropped out those white borders. And now you can use this for anything. It's basically a picture. So you can use it anywhere on the website, you can use it on social media, anything you like. And then we can pull that out to the sides across our page. What well, this also does allow you to do that if you go ahead and find that your printer doesn't actually print out borderless, then you can just change this picture on your page rather than moving all these bows in. So if your printer isn't borderless, what you're going to get is it's going to cut everything down here. So you'd have to go back in and move everything. The great thing about having this as an image is that you can just simply resize it so that if your printer is, isn't borderless, you can then just resize it like this. So it takes in that white border, which you can later cut off, but it means your bow isn't going to be at the edge and you're going to have to slice half the bow off. So another good tip. Perfect. So I hope that's helped you today. I hope that's given you lots of ideas and lots of ways, tools and techniques for producing your own customized poster. If it has, please like and subscribe and have a great day.